Charles Martin was selling insurance and writing a book on the side, and then one day, his insurance company offered him a six-figure income and a six-figure bonus. Sure, he needed the money, but Charles turned it down, and it's a good thing he did. Charles Martin has been writing since he was 15. He published his first book in 2004, but that came only after Charles graduated from Regent University. The Lord gave me the pen to sort of express whatever was bubbling up inside me. I was able to get on the page, but I couldn't get out my mouth. Now he's the New York Times best-selling author of 12 novels. His latest, Long Way Gone, is the story of a wayward son. Well, Charles Martin is joining us now, and we welcome you back to the 700 Club, Charles. Thank you. I just mentioned, you know, you were offered a six-figure income, a six-figure bonus. You turned it down. What was, we just want to know, what was going through your mind at well, that was, moment? I don't know. I, I think the Lord gave me faith in that moment. But more yeah. importantly than that, I think he gave Christy faith for us. Because she yeah. really, my wife gave me permission to like wow. try this gig. There was a moment in our house where she said, and we're trying to figure all this out. She said, okay, we're going to do this one time all out. Because I don't want to get with you to your age 40. Yeah. And you tell me you could have been somebody else. Boy, that's the truth. want to say also that along the way, because I think this would be helpful to people to know, it wasn't like you stopped the insurance company and voila, you had a writing career. No. 86 rejection yeah. letters. I read somewhere that uh, if F. Scott Fitzgerald's This Side of Paradise was rejected 126 times. So Ooh. I took a little yellow sticky note. You put it right there on my turn on my computer terminal. It said 126, and I said when I get there, I'll quit and go do something else. Yeah. And I probably had no intention of doing that, but it was a marker. Yeah. And when we got to 85, I, that was not a good day. 86 was not. But shortly thereafter, I got an yeah. agent. Well, and you know that's the way it happens, isn't it? Like rejection, 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 and then the moment. What was the turning point? My grandparents had lunch at the National Prayer Breakfast and sat next to an author, and he invited really? me to lunch. Strategically positioned. Yeah. I mean, the Lord did. I didn't do this. The Lord did it. Wow. Uh -huh. Amazing. Well, you've published 12 novels. We mentioned he yeah. was sitting here with me saying, I still can't believe I've done this. No, I can't. I mean, Harper <laughs> Lee wrote two, and she's really something, you know, and I think 12? Christy and I, the other morning at breakfast when the book came out, we're sitting at the table praying. And I'm like, Lord, thank you for 12. And it was the first time I had voiced 12. 12. And I just, yeah. I couldn't How believe it. How did that happen? Well, the latest, Long Way Gone, is just releasing. What, what was your inspiration? A couple for years this ago, one? I was speaking somewhere in North Georgia. And after I finished, a lady came up to me and she told me the story. Her son's in prison, he'll mm -hmm. be there for a long time. He did a lot of bad things. She's heartbroken. There's a lot of pain looking at me. And she looked at me with this kind of desperation, and she said, when is gone too far gone? Wow. And that just, it kind of pierced me. A couple weeks later, I'm in Luke in the 15th chapter, and I, I mean, you, you read about the prodigal and what he does and how far he goes, and, but then you get to the 20th verse, and it's one of my favorite, and it says, but while he was still a long way off, and it means no matter where you go, no matter how far, no matter what you yeah. do, no matter what shame, sin, whatever, that the love of the Father finds you. I mean, Isaiah says, my arm is not so short that it cannot save. Yes. So yes. with that picture in mind and with some letters I got from some guys in prison asking the same thing, I said, I wonder if I could tell the story my, my way. way. Yeah. So that yeah. novel maybe is my answer to that question. Well, the main author or the main character in your book is an aspiring musician. Yeah. Boy, you could relate to that as an aspiring writer. Our real son yeah. John T is our is our musician. And I had I went to Nashville and did some great research. I met one of Zach Brown's backup singers. I met Taylor Swift's acoustic guy. I met some phenomenal folks. But when I brought it home, John yeah. T, who's now 16, kind of helped me unpack it, and he helped translate it from music to English. Yeah. So it was, Christy and I looked at it and it was like 13 <laughs> years of piano lessons finally paid off. <laughs> Here it is, novel number 12, right? Well, it's, it's a wonderful read. And I want to mention also that one of your other books, what was it called, uh, The Mountain Before Us? The Mountain Between Us. The Mountain Between Us is now being made right. into a movie. Talk right. about 20th that. 20th Century Fox has had it for several years, but they're kind of in the final stretch. So we're told the executive producer is the lady that did The Life of Pi. Um, wow. They've signed up Idris Elba and um, a little unknown actor by the name of Kate Winslet, Ooh. <laughs> her actress. 
<laughs> I'm, sick. I'm excited. For, I think, I, I hope they make a great movie. I mean, I do. I hope they pull it off and we can take our kids and go see it. And yes. They Wouldn't start filming uh, December 1st in yeah. Vancouver. You know, one of the things I've noticed about you, Charles, is no matter how many books you write, no matter how successful you are, the core of who you are is your faith. Mm. You're a graduate of Regent yeah. University, and yeah. what role did that play in strengthening? We were on Facebook Live a minute ago. I'd never done that. It was my first time, and she asked me to pray at the end of it. And I said, I, well, I'm good at that. I've prayed a lot on this campus. This is what got me out of here. But the, when, I got, <laughs> when I got here, my, I'm seriously in that chapel. My buddy and I, Kurt, would go in there and just kneel down before class. But it was my heart then and now was like, Lord, this is my gift. This is what I do. This is what makes me, it's like breathing. Yeah. I love it. So let yeah. me go do it. And I hope, I love that my, that says, you know, one of my books has hit the New York Times list. But more importantly than that, when I get letters from guys in prison, yeah. and it's these muscle tattooed men yeah. that are going to be there in life, and they tell me that my books reach them in places that nothing has reached them in a long time, yeah. I'd rather have that. Amen. So I'm still offering my gift to, for the, you know, to the king and saying, mm -hmm. here it is and use me. And I'm I pray that he does. Yeah. yeah. Well, he, he has, he is, and I'm sure he will continue to because your heart's in the right place. It's a wonderful book. Charles, thank you for being with us and Thanks sharing your back. story. It's so inspiring. Listen, if you are looking for a great read, check out his latest novel. It's called Long Way Gone, and it's available nationwide. And then watch for that movie because it sound like, sounds like it's going to be wonderful and something fun. If you're looking for a great place to continue your education, you might want to check out Regent University. You could be one of those people on your knees in the chapel. <laughs> Call the number you see on your screen, or you can log on to regent.edu for more information.